I am back in Michigan and I wanted to do that to surprise my mom for Mother's Day and when my nephews had a birthday, but I brought the Corvette back home. What I want to do is get it off the trailer, put it back in the garage and do an old classic, bring it to the roots type of video where I talk about a couple of things that are interesting about this car, some facts that most people won't know unless they have the front <laughs> off, some mechanical things that are really fascinating, as well as trying to figure out what we're going to do about the front bumper before we load it back up and head back to California. One of the more interesting features of this car is a front lift that is optional when you option the car this high up. Unfortunately, that means absolutely nothing to me because there's nothing to scrape on the front end, but that's about $1,800. Uh, eventually, when the front end gets back on, that'll be useful. That works. I like that. Nothing like the uh, completed one. We got to drive around the track. <laughs> hood open. Oh, that's why it, it won't go faster, just because the hood. that feature. Oh, that's cool, blind spot works. This is a sight for sore eyes. There's my beautiful blue walls that I still haven't finished up at the top. It's been one hell of a journey and it can't be more full circle than this to have the Corvette, which seems kind of irrelevant, right? But to be here when this is the same place that I unveiled the original four rotor to begin with, and this is the car that that engine is going into. So it really does bring a full circle aspect to all of this. It just feels right. Now, I, I figured we've got a broken front end, and I saw a lot of comments saying, what if you put an RX-7 front end on there? And there were jokes, but like there was a 10% like seriousness to them. So I figured, let me give you guys what you want. You know, a lot of people love the 99 spec front for the FD, but I think they're really sleeping on the original front. <laughs> the frog eye looking thing. Does that fit? I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that fits. <laughs> this is like those guys that Photoshop like weird front ends onto cars that they don't belong on, like Bugattis and like Volkswagen Beetles and whatnot. There you go. There's a muse, an FD front on a, C8 Corvette, every bit of wrong. I know what you guys are thinking, what about this angle? What if it looks a little bit better from the side? I, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Let's go a little bit more angular. Let's even go GM. <laughs> I present to you the CTS V8. <laughs> this uh, does do it more justice with the angular curves and whatnot on here, but I don't know. Oh, okay, if we're not gonna do GM specific, this car is more exotic, let's go that route. It's an exotic, we should treat it like an exotic. That's a Euro Lamborghini front bumper. It really clearly is the best choice for this car. <laughs> nah, I think I'm gonna stick with the stock bumper. <laughs> that bumper is heavy as hell. I'm breaking a sweat just moving bumpers around. So we're definitely gonna stick with the stock bumper. I think it's an absolutely beautiful part of the car, if not the most beautiful part of the car. When you say is the C8 an exotic, it's the front bumper to me that screams Yes, but it's what's under the front bumper that signifies the advancement of technology that this car represents. <laughs> wow, I sound like a car reviewer. Let me show you a couple of really fascinating things about the C8 that most people probably don't know. All C8s come with two radiators in the front as well as your air conditioning condenser, but the Z51 comes with an additional one in here. Barely see it. So that's the Z51 package is meant to be more of a track car. And with that, of course, like you kind of know this general knowledge that the brakes are upgraded. As the Z51 has three radiators for this car, I suspect the Z06 and later will have four. This vent is completely empty, short of the spall fan inside of it. It's not doing anything other than moving air to cool down the engine compartment. So that gives us another perfect place to run an intercooler or, hell, a fourth radiator. Obviously, this car doesn't have oil coolers. It's a piston engine. 
but we'll have oil coolers. We can have oil coolers in the front. We have so many options to get everything away from where the four rotor is going to rest. Another little tidbit about the cooling system. Guess how many quarts of coolant this cooling system takes? Not just the radiator, but the whole system on this car. 24 quarts. <laughs> So I'm sure a large part of that is actually the engine itself, but this whole car can take a lot of coolant. Again, another reason why this car is meant to have a rotary engine. Well, the microphone disconnected halfway through the video and I'm already in Ontario, so I wanted to finish it again outright. You get to see kind of a sneak peek of what we've already done, but what I really wanted to talk about was the eight speed dual clutch transmission. God, that car looks good in this light. So that thing's made by Tremec, which is also used on the Ford GT500, the new one but it is very interestingly close to Tremec's other product, the T56 Magnum. If you think of first through six, here you look at the chart here, on first through six through both of them, they're very similar, although the eight speed dual clutch doesn't have a one-to-one -one fourth gear. There is no one-to-one -one on this thing, and they all kind of shift closer towards the longer range. The other side to that is that, of course, it's got two more gears for overdrive, so getting great gas mileage. That's not the most magical part of this car. It is further back. If you were to look at the rear differential ratio, which that's not it, that's a tire, the rear diff is of 3.44, not proper for a rotary engine. That's way too long, way too tall. Oddly enough, it's 3.46 that was on that Corvette, is when we first took it to Vegas and that was horrible. It was heavy load, low acceleration, not good. The C8 also has what's called a transfer gear and we'll dig into this ourselves. It might have a 3.44 rear end, but the C8 and the C8 Z51 come with two slightly different transfer gears. That transfer gear on the Z51 gives it a 5.2 gear ratio, which is oddly similar to the Ford 8.8 rear end in the three rotor, that's 5.12. When you saw me driving the T56 Magnum on that, that was beautifully geared for that engine's power. This vehicle is meant for a rotary engine. If you were to tear into my CTSV or even the C5, you'd feel like this car is a combination of both with 10 years in the future. The C5 has the exact same upper control arm type mount. When it works, why not keep using it? The upper control arms are just like the C5, the same way they mount in. Same general geometry too. Lower control arms are similar, but it has the same front subframe and rear subframe model, even though it's a million times newer. Not only that, this definitely comes from my CTSV. These are the electromagnetic or ferromagnetic shocks that can firm up and soften for dampening based on whatever the computer wants. There's also, over here in the darkness, there's also a little system that's monitoring where the position of the wheel is. That system monitors it about 10 times faster than it can adjust it, but of course it's logging all of that and making decisions based on your current traction. I can't be more appreciative of the sound cutout because I was dead wrong about that box right there. I assumed it was a brake system, and it looks like it. You know, there's two brake lines, there's a brake fluid canister, they both are hard lines for high pressure. That is not the case. That is actually the optional lift. Oh, sitting right there in the middle, all pretty. That line runs all the way back here, comes over, and then actually plugs into the very bottom of the shock, interesting enough, because it runs right next to the brake line. The brake system, though, on this car is more like Forza. Yes, all of the sims that are being downloaded now because everybody's stuck at home because of corona, that car does not have a real pedal. The pedal does not get actuated by fluid. There's no master slave cylinder in that sense. There is a reservoir and there is ABS and all that sort of stuff, but that right there actually pressurizes the brakes for you. So it is similar to drive by wire. This is brake by wire. And that means that the pedal has to be operational inside of this system or this car will not work for me. The cool part about that is the pedal does have its own like force feedback mode and we'll have some fun playing with that. So if we have brake by wire, we also have drive by wire, which is phenomenal for what we're gonna be doing. It simplifies trying to run a cable to the back of the car. We also have electronic power assist and it's built onto the steering rack. So we don't have to have all these random ass accessories on the rotary engine, which makes this swap that much easier. If we had power steering, which by the way, power steering on this car is so amazing. I hate both of these cars. This one's gonna get it and this one's definitely gonna get it because having this insane monster with power steering is one of the greatest luxuries I've ever had in my life. So we've got electronic power assist steering on this. That means we just have to worry about a good alternator, which 
that's one of my specialties. Well, it is nice to stop back home for a little bit just to appreciate where I started from. I have none of the tools to take good care of this car. I can just stare at it like I used to. <laughs> just simply look at the car and go, hmm, it definitely needs some work. We're gonna go ahead and load it back up, head back out to Ontario, and begin fixing the poor car. Okay, so my brother very clearly pointed out quickly, <laughs> I've been making sense of this, that is actually the lift. That's the master brake cylinder, but same concept, just not the same. 